Hello everyone, so welcome back to this channel. So I'm excited to announce that a new video series is coming up to help you to attempt your IGCSE exam. And in our first video of the series here, I'm going to um, solve some of the topical, some of the possible questions for pseudocode, which is one of the topic that a lot of students fear. And here, the first question that we'll be solving here is um, a question from your specimen paper. And the question requires you to declare these variables um, that has different data types. So to declare a variable in pseudocode, you start off with the declare keyword, followed by the variable name. So the first one, the variable name is called x, that stores a string. So declaring a variable is not like creating a variable in which you don't need to assign a value to it. So instead of writing an arrow, you just write a colon, followed by the data type of this variable, which is string. And that's it, you get one point for that. And then another variable called y store position in the string. So again, the same syntax, we use the declare keyword, followed by the y variable name. So here, there is a um, twist here. So instead of putting string, do know that they are referring to a position, which is a number. Therefore, instead of writing string, you should be writing integer. And again, Z stores the number of characters in the string. So it's a num the number of characters is a number. So again, it's an integer data type. So I'm going to write declare Z integer. And that's about it for question A. And let's proceed to question B, which is worth around seven, six to seven marks. Okay. The question has stated that the function length x finds the length of a string x, all right? And a substring function x, y, z finds a substring of x starting at position y and z character long. So what this function basically means is that, let's say I have a sub, I call it a substring function, and I put in um, a, b, c, d as my string, and two, um, I'll put one, two, as my variable. So what, they, what this says is that this is the starting position of the string I want to set, extract position, and this is the length of the substring. So I have a, b, c, d here. So starting from position one, and because the length of the substring is two, therefore using this function, the string I'm extracting is a, b, which is starting from position one, and it's two character long. So just to help you understand the functions better. And the first character in X is one, is in position one. So let's solve each bullet point one by one to get our points. And we'll create a variable called X and store the string programming is fun. That's easy, is fun. And then we'll find the length of the string and output it. So to find the length of this string, as mentioned by the question, we can use length x function. So we'll do length x. So when we do this function here, they will give us the length of this um, string called x, and then they want us to output it. So we can directly write the output function on its left-hand side. So, oh. so what I'm saying here is that I'm outputting what the length of this string is. Here we I have two points. And last but not least, extract the word fun from the string and output it, which means I need to extract this string string from x here. So um, we all know that we need to use the substring function. So I'm going to put substring. And the string I want to extract here is called x. So now the stuff I need to figure out is the starting position of the substring I want to extract. So what I will do is that I'll write down the index indices for my string. So I'm going to start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, 7, 7, 8, 
so 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's a little bit messy here. So instead of doing this, I will draw some boxes for all of you. So I'm going to write programming is fun. So we'll draw some boxes to help us write the indexes better. So remember, space is also considered a letter. So we index start from the position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Right? So I know that the keyword F here start at position 16. So because the second argument of this function Y here is the starting position. So since I want to extract the keyword F, I write 17. And the length of the substring fun is 3. So I'll write 3 here in my function. And then I'll output it. And here I have it. Um, the answers to the requirements here. All right. So that's not very hard, but um, it's easy to make careless mistakes if you're not careful. So let's move on to some of the parser questions on the topic pseudocode. And one of the famous questions is that they will show you some codes, pseudocodes, that are wrongly written, and then you will have to provide correction to it. So before you solve these problems, I um, do, do want to note, mention that I have prepared this pseudocode cheat sheet for all of you who wish to learn more. Um, they basically is a one pager that contains the syntaxes to declare a variable, um, all the mathematical comparison operators, declaring an array, conditionals, and the three different types of iteration that we have learned. Okay, so this. So from this code here, um, let's first understand the requirement before we correct it. So the code written should generate 50 positive random integer, which value less than or equal to 100, which means they should be from 1 to 100. All right. And these random integers are then stored in the array called random. And again, there's another function Ren 1, 4 will generate the number from 1, 2, 3, but not 4. So this is a key point. So the question should ask for arrows here and write a correction for each arrow. So the first arrow um, is that, okay, let's see if we can find any arrow. So here I have a repeat until construct, which is an iteration. So the first arrow that I can spot immediately is this. They are adding the counter value by two after each iteration. So this means that because we our program requires us to loop for 50 times, if we increment the counter by two each time, then the program will likely only loop for 25 times, considering our ending value is 50. So how we can write our answer here is that we'll write down the arrow code and then provide the correction. Plus one. So that's the first arrow. And the second arrow that I can spot here is how they call this function. So the information they show us is that ran one four will generate one, two, three, but not four. But here our program state the random number generated has to be less than or equal. That means 100 needs to be included. So instead of writing ran one to 10, they should be written as ren 1, 101. So that this is so that 100, the value 100 here, can be included. Can be included. All right, what else here? So the third arrow here is a little bit more explicit, um, implicit, which is this line of code here. So let's erase everything here. And since the counter value start from zero, and if um, we added this by one every iteration, um, what repeat, con repeat until construct does is that the line of code here will be repeated until this condition is met. 
But since our initial value is zero, if we were to repeat this line of code only when, um, only until counter less than or equal to 50, this means that line three and four will only get repeated for one time. Because after the iteration here, count will be equal to one and it will be less than or equal to 50. So the iteration will stop and it will not generate any more numbers. So instead of writing count, oh, instead of writing count less than or equal to 50, the correct condition should be count equal to 50 because this will be our stopping condition. And when count equal to 50, it means that we have generated 50 positive integer. So the correct answer should be count equal to 50. Um, you could also write in count greater than or equal to 50. It will not make any difference here. All right. So here we have three arrows and the last arrow is actually the most obvious one. You can see that the counter, the count variable is initialized as, um, it, the name is count. But when we are putting in the value here into the array, we are using the variable called counter, which is not a variable that we have created. So what you have to do is that instead of writing, all right, there's a laggy, some laggy condition here. All right. So instead of writing count rent num um, counter, it should be rent num count, the variable that we have created. All right. Of course, um, according to the marking scheme, you could also change count, count, and count into counter instead. But that will require it to do more correction. So I think a better one is to change this counter into count. So here you have it, four points for you. And next question, rewrite the algorithm using a for next loop. So since our task is to generate 50 random integers, I will start off with a for statement. I'll use a counter variable. Start with the value of one, and I'm looping it for 50 times to 50. And what I do in each iteration is that I'll generate a random number. Or you do ran from one. Again, don't make the mistake, 101. This value here will be assigned to my counter variable, so which is my random. So let me move this a little bit to the right hand side. My random um, counter. So um, after that, I'll just put a next counter to increment my counter by one. So that's it. So this is how we rewrite the algorithm here with a for statement. So as you can see, a for loop is a lot shorter, but um, they, are, they can also be inflexible when you need it. So here we have already have a repeat until loop structure and followed by the for loop structure here. And they said, what, are, what is another loop structure available? So according to our spreadsheet, so we have three types of iteration, for loop, repeat until, and the last one is the while do and while statement. So you can write your answer as while um, do and while statement. statement. So that's it. So here's how we solve um, this particular past year question. All right, next up, we have another course that needs us to find some of the arrows. So feel free to pause the video to see if you can find that before me. And so here I have a pseudocode algorithm that works as a calculator. So what this code does is that um, it's a while loop. That means it can do it multiple times. User will output one if they want to do a plus operation, two if they want to do a minus, three, multiply, fourth, and divide, so on and so forth. They'll first be asked to enter an operator and then followed by um, the input values uh, that they have. All right, so we are asked to find five arrows. And I have already seen some of the statement here. The first arrow is this. They initialize the continuous variable 
to have value 1. And the second line here directly say while well, continue is equal to 0. So how a while loop statement works is that if this condition here is true, it means that this indented, indented code of line here will be repeated. And if we were to declare our continue variable, um, if you assign a value of 1 to a continue variable, then this code here won't run because in our first iteration here, continue equal to 1, and it's not equal to 0. The condition is not true. So this line of code will not run at all. So not serve what it does. So one correction that you could do is that instead of doing continue equal to 1, we let it be 0 instead. So that it start off with the value 0. And let's see if we can find another error here. So um, the other error, since we are asking for two input values, so this is how you ask for a first value. But if you look at how they ask for second value, this is wrong. Um, let me use a red color to show you. So this is wrong. And because they are outputting and not inputting. So instead of doing, so in, in our answers here, instead of doing output value 2, it should be input value 2. All right. So here I have an if case operators, and it sounds a little bit weird, right? And if we look into our pseudocode cheat sheet, if statement usually followed by then and else and then if, whereas the other conditional um, and case is usually followed by case of. So looking at our code here, instead of doing if operator, this is obviously a case of statement, which basically says that if the operator value is equal to 1, um, you'll do this line of code. So instead of if operator, it should be case of operator. All right. So um, that's the third arrow here. Let me highlight it. OK. And end case. So the fourth error here is a little bit more implicit. It's in line 15. Output, the answer is value 1. But if you look into the program, value 1 isn't the result, isn't the variable that stores the result. The variable that stores the result is answer. So instead of outputting value 1, answer should be output instead. So um, our arrow here for here is that instead of outputting um, the value, the answer is value one. I will do output. The answer is answer. All right. So um, that's the fourth arrow. So we have the first arrow here and the second arrow here, third arrow, fourth, um, where's the fourth arrow? Yeah, this is the fourth arrow. And the fifth arrow, again, is very implicit. Look into code number 16. Do you wish to enter more value, input more values? So if more values equal to no, then continue equal to one. So this is correct, all right? And the one that is wrong here is in our code line 22 here. Because if you check into your cheat sheet again, until it's only paired up with the repeat syntax. Whereas for while loop, you should put an end while instead to signify the end of the iteration. So here, instead of writing until condition equal to zero. The correct syntax should be and while. And yep, that's it. The five arrows that you can find in the course. Of course, for now, if you still feel like you cannot figure out the arrow, I would definitely recommend you to watch my pseudocode masterclass video to understand the basic syntax of each uh, pseudocode construct. All right, so mm, the follow-up question, 
the algorithm needs changing to only allow question one, two, three, or four to be entered for the input variable operator. Write the task to perform this task. Basically, we are saying that if the user does not enter one, two, three, or four here, we are going to write the program to force him or her to re-enter the input. So what you can do here is that we can use a while statement. While, let's say input operator. And while the operator value is less than one, all right, or if it is greater than four, which is what we accept. We are going to do this. We're going to ask the user to enter the operator again. So before the input, I should do an output. Please enter again. And then an input operator, followed by an end while statement. So basically, what I'm doing here is that first I ask the user to enter an operator. And if the operator enters less than one, for instance, negative five, or if it is greater than four, for instance, 100, I'm going to say, please enter again. And the user will need to enter another operator value. And it will continue until the user enters something value. OK? So um, this is how we write it. And we can, they also need us to enter the location in algorithm. So I will put my code around here. So you can write below line four. Line number four. So that's it um, for this question here. And let's proceed to the next one. And this question is relatively easy. You're not required to find an arrow, but you are required to um, fill up the blank. So this is the requ program requirement. You need to accept the ages of 100 students and I'll put a number of students who is from this age, this age, and this age. So because we are doing 100 iterations, so the blank here, it should be for student equal to one to 100. And I'll put, please enter your student name in age, years in age. So input age, if age is greater than seven, because we are calculating the number of students between 7 and 7 to 12, we need to add in a code here that is not just they need to be older than 7 years old, they also need n to be younger than 12 years old. So I'm going to add n h less than or equal to 12. And then the program will increment this variable by 1. So if the student is great, older than 12 years old and younger than 18 years old, or younger than 12, so I made a mistake here, instead of it should be less than, I will add count 12 to 18 counter by one. And then last but not least, um, they will do for 18 and they will output how many students are from this age and so on and so forth. So output there are, since I'm reporting the number of students over 18 years old, so I'm going to write, we are going to output the value stored in count over 18. So um, question B, write extra pseudocode that, need, that are needed to count the number of students who are under age 7. So of course, we can use an if statement to check whether the student is um, younger than seven years old. So I'll write if um, age is less than seven, then what I will do is that I will update count under seven variable. I will increment it by one. So let me erase it. Count under seven plus one, followed by an any statement here. And that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. Um, so that's how we solve question number two here. And 
The next question is from June 2022, which is the most recent exam. Um, you need to write a pseudocode routine that will check that each test result entered into the algorithm is between 0 to 100. So, which means if this, we'll first ask the user for a number. If the number is outside of the range of 0 to 100, they are going to enter the number again. So, again, um, just remember that if you ever need to ask the user to repeatedly enter something until a condition is met, just use a while loop. So, I'm going to do while. So, I'm going to first ask the user for an input for a number. Input number. So, while number is less than zero, all right, or the number, that means either they are less than zero or they are more than 100, I'm going to ask the user for a number again. I'm going to do input, hey, I'm going to say output, please enter number from zero to 100. And then also another input number again. And followed by an end wall statement. So that's pretty much it. That's how we ask um, the user to enter more numbers.